Good morning. Good morning and welcome as we join together here and at home to celebrate Easter Day. It's good to see everyone. Welcome if this is your first time with us. Welcome if this is your first time in a while. And welcome to all those who are here regularly worshipping together. Please do join us for tea and coffee after the service. You'll see it's not set up there because it's in the large hall. Um, if you go through these doors, follow the corridor down and the hall is at the end there. So please do. And there might even be some extra treats seeing as it's Easter Sunday. Can I say a big thank you to all those who have decorated the church for all our Easter services. To all those who've prepared worship and taken part. To all who've prepared refreshments. To all those who've run the sound desk. And all those who've contributed behind the scenes and up front to make our Easter experience all the better. It doesn't just happen, so thank you. There'll be no prayer meeting tomorrow. It will resume a week tomorrow. Can I just give you a date for your diary? Sunday the 30th of April at half past six, here in the church, there'll be an evening of praise and worship entitled Sing for Joy. And that is being led by our organist, Jonathan, with an augmented choir. So I'll announce that again so we get the details in our heads. And finally, can I, on behalf of all of us, formally welcome our new caretaker, Albert Shodunke. And I'm going to get that very right. Stand up, Albert. <laughs> Many of you will have seen Albert and his family joining us regularly in worship and uh, Albert has agreed to take on the post. So that will be Albert and Laura working hand in hand. So we look forward to that and hopefully being able to expand what we do and what we can offer on our premises. Good morning. Good morning. Let us worship God. I invite you, if you're able, After the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices to go and anoint the body of Jesus. Very early on Sunday morning at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they said to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? It was a very large stone. Then they looked up and saw that the stone had already been rolled back. So they entered the tomb where they saw a young man sitting on the right wearing a white robe and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified he is not here. He has been raised. Look, here is the place where they put him. Now go and give this message to his disciples, including Peter. He is going to Galilee ahead of you. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and ran from the tomb, distressed and terrified. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never put it out. Hallelujah. This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Christ is our peace, the indestructible peace we now share with each other. Let's greet those around us. Happy Easter. It's on. It's on.
I see a desire to sit, but I'm going to invite you to stand. <laughs> Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory the war death has won. Angels in bright raiment rolled the stone away. Head the folded grave clothes where thy body lay. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory, the war death has won. O Jesus, meet us, risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets us, scatters fear and gloom. Let the church with gladness hymns of triumph sing. For her Lord now liveth, death hath lost its sting. Thine be Let us pray. Risen, glorious Christ, we join with all your people in heaven and on earth to greet you and to celebrate the victory you have won. And what a victory! Beneath you, defeated, lie all humanity's ancient foes, pride, self-sufficiency, status, security, even death. By your triumph on the cross, you have put back in their proper place those things we have come to rely on for life itself. Friends, health, family, occupation, achievement, success. Lifted high on the cross, you hold up before us the ultimate power of love. Risen glorious from the tomb, you stand before us now companion, brother, servant, and living God. What can we do now but worship and praise and seek to follow? 
Lord, for us, you know full well the strife is not over, nor is the battle done. Even as we celebrate the completeness of your trial, still we seek from you succor and strength for our lesser conflicts day by day. If in our warfare against all that would dehumanize and defile your creation, we forget your way of waging battle. Forget to use your weapons of faith and hope and unconditional love. Forgive us, we pray. We thought we had heard it all. Dear God, we thought we knew the way of the world. The powers that be and the powers that would be. The ebb and flow of armies and international finance. The endless tide of refugees and the awfulness of hate. We thought, dear God, we knew. But here, before the mystery again of a word of love in a quiet garden and the promise suddenly of a new order of creation in place of the old, tired, familiar scene, we know now that we know nothing at all. Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. Now, the Sunday school is having a day off. But fortunately, we are all God's children. And we are all gathered to worship this morning on this most wonderful of days as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. And just to remind us this morning a wee bit of how that story played out, we have a little movie. Now, I'm sorry... I didn't tell you in advance that we were going to watch a movie. Because if I had, I'm sure you'd have all brought your popcorn. <laughs> but you'll just have to pretend. Just, just pretend you've got popcorn. Feel that. Some people like it salted. Some people like it sugared. But whatever you can have whichever you prefer in your imagination. We're going to rehearse for ourselves the Easter story. The Easter story begins on Palm Sunday. Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey. The crowd shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They waved their palm branches and laid their cloaks on the ground. A few days later, Jesus and his disciples were sharing the Passover meal. Jesus predicted that one of them would betray him and his disciples were shocked and saddened. Jesus broke the bread and said, this is my body, broken for you. And then he took the wine and said, this is my blood of the covenant, poured out for many. Jesus said to Peter, before the cock crows this very night, you will disown me three times. But Peter insisted, I am willing to die with you, Jesus. I will never disown you. Jesus and his disciples went out to the garden of Gethsemane. Jesus asked his disciples to keep watch while he prayed. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. 
If it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Then Judas came to betray Jesus to the Jewish leaders. Jesus was arrested and the disciples ran away. The Jewish leaders put Jesus on trial before the high priest. Even though Jesus was innocent, he didn't defend himself from the false accusations made against him. When the high priest asked Jesus, are you the Messiah? Jesus answered, I am. Then they all condemned Jesus to be deserving of death and they beat him. While Jesus was on trial, Peter was in the courtyard below. Three times Peter was asked if he knew Jesus, but three times Peter denied knowing him. The cock crowed and Peter remembered what Jesus had said and he wept. Jesus was then taken to Pilate, the Roman governor. Pilate knew Jesus was innocent, but the crowd shouted, crucify him and Pilate was afraid. So Pilate let Barabbas, a murderer, go free instead of Jesus. They dressed Jesus with a purple robe and a crown of thorns. Jesus was crucified on Good Friday with a thief either side of him. At midday, darkness came over the whole land for three hours. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then he breathed his last. When the Roman centurion saw how Jesus died, he said, Surely this man was a son of God. After Jesus died, his body was placed in a tomb and a heavy stone was rolled across the entrance. Early on the morning of the third day, the women came to anoint Jesus' body, according to the Jewish custom. But when they got there, the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. An angel told them the good news. Jesus is not here. He has risen from the dead. We're going to sing a song from Zimbabwe now. I'm going to la, and eventually you're going to hum. I just love saying that. <coughs> I do. I know it. La 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 la. La 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 That's the first half of the verse. You I'll lie, you hum. La 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 Very good. Let's stand to sing.
we recognize that even on Easter Sunday morning, part of us, part of us struggles to keep up. Part of us struggles to leave behind those things that weigh on us. So we share these words. When we are all despairing, when the world is full of grief, when we see no way ahead and hope has gone away, roll back the stone. Although we fear change, Although we are not ready, although we'd rather weep and run away, roll back the stone. Because we're coming with the women. Because we hope where hope is vain. Because you call us from the grave and show us the way, roll back the stone. I invite you now, if you're able, to stand and affirm your faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated on the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now the green blade riseth from the buried grain. Easter faith makes itself known in every corner of the world. 
in the face of violence and death. During the dark days of apartheid in South Africa, when it seemed that the death-dealing oppressive power of racist violence held that nation in a vice-like grip, Archbishop Desmond Tutu declared, goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through him who loved us. Easter Day is not about forgetting Good Friday. It is about transforming it. I said some months ago that I would tell you how my father learned to play the guitar. My dad, Bill, was a sergeant in the RAOC, the Royal Army Ordnance Corps, when, along with everyone else, he was taken prisoner during the Battle for Crete in World War II. He was transported across Europe, ending up in a prisoner of war camp in what is now Poland, not far from Krakow, Krakow. And sometime later, because Bill had some French, he was put in charge of a batch of new arrivals in the camp, some 35 French foreign legionnaires, who were all, in fact, Spanish. Refugees from the Spanish Civil War who fled Franco's forces into France and were given the choice of joining the Foreign Legion or being sent back to Spain. Big choice. The relationship between Bill and these legionnaires was a good one. And when eventually the Spaniards were to be moved on to a different camp where they would be used as farm laborers, they asked if he would go with them, which he did. And part of that strong bond there was shown in that he gave many of them English lessons, and they taught him to play the guitar. There's nothing romantic about being a prisoner of war. And my father's health suffered to the extent that he died, not immediately, of course, but he died a young man. However, in a small way, that story speaks of human resilience in the face of suffering. And I tell that story today because the prisoner at war camp they initially met in Bill and the Spaniards. That prisoner of war camp is preserved as a museum, and there is a large online community of the descendants of those who were incarcerated there, including some Spanish families. And my brother and I were planning just before COVID struck to go there to visit, but we had to postpone, so hopefully We'll do it sometime next year. I'm also aware, though, that the camp is not very far from the site of Auschwitz concentration camp, a name synonymous with death. And I know that that will have to form part of our trip. Over the years, I have made a point wherever I have been of visiting as a form of pilgrimage 
some of the most apparently God-forsaken places. The ovens of Dachau concentration camp in Bavaria. The killing fields of Cambodia. The memorial site of the nuclear bomb in Hiroshima. Ground zero on the site of the World Trade Center in New York. The Museum of Terror in Budapest that documents the horrors of the communist era as well as of the Nazi occupation. Yad Vashem, the heartbreaking Holocaust Memorial Center in Jerusalem. as well as the barbed-wired town of Hebron on the West Bank, and the Israel-Syrian border on the Golan Heights, the Berlin Wall, the battlefield of Culloden, the still war-littered beaches of Normandy, to name but some. And these are places that reduced me to silence. I have no words in response to them as I encounter their pain-filled stories. and never thereafter any easy words. I'm left with the immense and desperate scale of human suffering. And we need to remember that crosses, crosses stood mundanely on street corners in the Palestine of Jesus' day. Easter faith, the risen life that we are called to, looks violence and death in the eye. Very truly I tell you, said Jesus, very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And the Franciscan writer Richard Rohr says, this about that verse of Scripture. He says, from this divine paradox, it follows that there can be no compassion without passion. No response of loving kindness unless there first comes suffering. You will know the truth Jesus said to his disciples, to those who trusted him, and the truth will make you free. By his clear-eyed honesty, Jesus revealed holy, ironic wholeness. Denying pain would intensify it. But facing hard facts of life and death would lead people deep into reality. The only place where God eternal can be found.
as well as having heard Desmond Tutu preach in person more than once, and having spent some time not with him but with his wife, Leah. Another of the archbishops that I met more than once is Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury. Indeed, I once processed with him in Westminster at a service to mark the opening of a new session of Parliament, having been asked to go in place of the then moderator. And afterwards, one of the other ministers in the procession said to me, you had the best robes. Now, I had had to go around and borrow the various bits and pieces I was wearing from friends. So I really did think on that occasion I was representing the whole Church of Scotland. I want to share some words, quite a few words, from Rowan Williams from almost 20 years ago about how the community of faith can embody the risen life in the face of violence and death. And he says this. The goodness of the resurrection news. The goodness of the resurrection news is most evident for those who have lost people they love to any kind of incomprehensible evil. The tragedies of the apparent meaninglessness of accident, the horrors of violence or injustice, Think back for a moment when death squads operated in countries like Argentina or El Salvador. The Christians there developed a very dramatic way of celebrating their faith, their hope, and their resistance. At the liturgy in church, someone would read out the names of those killed or disappeared. And for each name, someone would call out from the congregation, Presente, here. When the assembly is gathered before God, the lost are indeed Presente. When we pray during the Eucharist, the communion, with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, we say, Presente, for all those the world, including us, would forget. And God remembers. With angels and archangels, with the butchered Rwandans of 10 years ago and the butchered or brutalized Ugandan children of last week or yesterday, with the young woman dead on a mattress in King's Cross after an overdose and the childless widower with Alzheimer's, with the thief crucified alongside Jesus, and all the thousands of other anonymous thieves crucified in Judea by an efficient imperial administration with the whole company of heaven, those whom God receives in his mercy. And with Christ our Lord, the firstborn from the dead, by whose death our sinful forgetfulness and lukewarm love can be forgiven and kindled to life, who leaves no human soul in anonymity and oblivion, but gives to all the dignity of a name and a presence, 
He is risen. He is not here. He is present everywhere and to all. He is risen. Presente. And it is, I submit, when we are, like these Christians in South America, led deep into reality, the only place where the eternal God can be found, that we can find our voice and say on this Easter day, goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through him who loved us. sing our offering prayer. Take, O oh, take me as I am. This joyful Easter tide away with sin and sorrow.
Why? Why do you seek the living among the dead? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are always looking for you in the wrong places. Among the good and respectable people, when we should know you are to be found with the poor and disreputable and outcast. Lord Jesus, we are always looking for you in the wrong places, at a safe distance. But you come so close to us, nearer to us than breathing. We look for you in churchy things, but we are more likely to find you among the pots and pans or around the kitchen table. We look for you in buildings, but you walked crowded streets and shorelines and mountains. Even now, after Easter, still we insist on trying to find you among the tombstones, among long dead dogmas, in old decaying hurts and fears, in the guilts and resentments we inhabit like a coffin. The angel said, why do you look for him among the dead? He is not here. Lord Jesus, help us to lay down the grave clothes, roll away the stone, and come out into life here and now. We will find you among the living, ahead of us, going to the Galilee we seek. You have wrestled death to the ground, and now there is nowhere we can go, no darkness we can enter, which is not God-encompassed. And now in quietness, we name before you those places and people and causes who need our prayers today. And we hold before you all our dear ones, wherever they may be. Hold them and hold us in your love, we pray. And hear us as now we pray in Jesus' words, saying together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Savior died and rose again triumphant from the grave. Lord of life, you walk this journey with us and through us. Lead us, Lord. Journeying within and wrestling with the world. Lead us, Lord. And let us rejoice that every place is your place. In the name of Christ, the risen one. Amen. Go and seek the Lord among the living and live in him the risen life and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit rest on you now and remain with you always. <laughs>